Today we're going to be looking at the exemplar from 2018 for RT, the paper 1 for grade 12. And today we're going to be looking at question 1. So we're going to be looking at section A, question 1, which is some general programming skills. This is like basic grade 10 and grade 11 work. So let's have a look. We're dealing with a LAN type theme where there's some sort of gaming parties. So that's going to be the general theme through this um, paper. So let's have a look at question one. So there's going to be some sort of register. So we can see some functionality. We can see there are going to be four questions for question one. And let's go straight to question 1.1. So on the register button, we must write the code that must enter. So we're going to enter in the player's name and email. And we must then compile some sort of message. And the message indicates if it's successful or not. And if it's not successful, that is if there is nothing entered in the edit boxes so it's successful if there's something in the edit boxes but if there's nothing then we must give some sort of error message no not all the data was provided so that's quite a basic example let's go to the form here there we can see question 1.1 so we're going to just double click on that code so the first thing we do we're going to get the the input so we're going to get the values for the player's name and the email which i'm just going to take as strings so the email and the name of type string and very basic we want to check if they're not empty so we first want to get the values into them from the edit controls so there's the edt email dot text and then there's the name which we get from edt uh, name dot text so we just put them into variables and then i can do the simple if now there are lots of ways to check if it's empty you could check if the length of s email equals zero that's one way um or it could be as simple as checking if the email is equal to nothing so if the email is equal to nothing Okay, now we remember when we have multiple conditions like an AND or an OR, we need to have brackets around our condition. Now we are checking if it's not, we want to see if it's not equal to nothing. If it's not equal to nothing and the name is not equal to the null string or nothing, remember to put brackets around your conditions if you've got lots of um, criteria with an AND. If the the email is nothing, is not equal to nothing, and the, the name is not nothing. That means there's something in both, and then we're happy with that. Then I'm just going to show a message, and we want it to look something like that. So we want the name uh, with the email address, then the email address has been registered. I'm actually just going to copy that, save time, and I'm just going to say we're going to show message that. What would it allow me to paste? There we go. And I'm just going to make that into a string. Now, first of all, player name, we're going to get the name from our S name variable. Then I'm going to add in quotes the word with email address. And then I'm going to close the bracket or close the quotes. So that's the rest of the text. And now I'm going to go into the email address that I'm going to get from the email variable. And then I'm going to add more text which has been registered. And then I'm going to close that little text. So I've compiled a string here. I've taken the name. I've compiled it with some text there. Then I've taken the email. Now you could have just used the actual edit controls here as well. But the nice thing about using variables is that you see how I've repeatedly used them. So that makes sense there. So it makes it a lot easier. So we're happy with that. That's if it all works. If it doesn't work. So that's the else part. If it doesn't work, then... We want to say not all the data was provided. So then we're going to show a message and not all the data was provided. Try and make sure that your inputs and that all match as given in the, the diagrams here. So we want both of those to not be blank. If one of them is blank or both of them are blank, then it will show hey, you didn't provide all the information. So let's hope it works. Let's see if it works. Please work. So we're just going to compile quickly. So we're going to start off by testing it. Not all the data. So nothing was entered. If I enter in something in one but not the other, still no data. If I enter nothing in the other one, still not. But if I put something in both of them, then it works. And obviously those are not very good <laughs> player names and emails, but at least we know it works. 
Okay, great. Let's move on to the next question. Question number two. Okay, so the land party provide meals. Good, I love food. Let's see if they provide sandwiches. Oh, burgers, my favorite. And then pizza, medium-sized pizza. So they must select one of the meals from a combo box. Okay, that's something different. And the number must be ordered from a spin edit. And then the user must tick a checkbox if they are vegetarian version. So vegetarian, if they don't want um, a vegetarian burger, I assume. And a vegetarian pizza, a vegetarian sandwich. And it, what what does that mean if it's vegetarian? Well, if it's vegetarian, um, the calculated amount to be paid, decrease the amount by 10% if the vegetarian option is being selected. So we must decrease it by 10% if they, the amount by 10%. So let's have a look. Display the calculated amount in the other box, format it to currency, and display it to two decimal places with blue text. Okay, that's something that I haven't seen before, but we can figure it out. We can always figure it out. Let's first get our input. So let's have a look at our program. And yeah, we are at question two. So there's our combo box, there's our spin it, and there's if it's been checked. Now I'm going to go ahead and just work it out without the vegetarian option. We can always minus 10% later. So I need to know from this checkbox which one is selected. Now I don't know what if the order is correct. So if I click on there, you see that's the first option, that's the second option, that's the third option. So we can see that. And there's our spin edit. Uh, so it's our spin edit is SED num mills, and then there's the checkbox. So first of all, I need to over here, I want to record the quantity that they want, this number of meals that they want. It's quite so we want to say, okay, number of meals. So I'm gonna make it R num meals. And that's gonna be some sort of integer. And we are gonna say R num meals. How do I get the value from a spin edit? Well, it's the spin edit control. See if we got the spin edit, yeah. Oh, the program's still running in the background, so let's stop there. The spin edit control, that's the num meals. Now the property to determine what the value is is dot value, which is an integer. We've got an integer that all matches. There's no need for any conversions. That's great. Now I need to record which option they select, and based on the option they select depends on the price. Hmm, so let's make a price variable. So I'm going to make a price variable, which will be a real, because we've got some decimals there. So price of type real. And how do I know? Well, you're going to use, let's use a case statement. You could use an if statement, but I know the checkbox, meal options. Now, there's a property for it called item index, and that will tell me which one was selected. Now, this is the end of our case statement. Remember, case statement always have end, um, but they don't have a begin. So... Now that item index, when the first one is selected, that means a zero will be in the item index. So if it's a zero, then I want the price to be 25 Rand. So we can make price equal to 25. I'm just leave it like that. If the second option is selected, that means the index will be a one. The price will be 32 Rand 80. So 32 Rand 80. And if the third option is selected, then that price will be 45 rand 75 45 75 okay so that's how i determine the price you could have used an if statement you could have said if the check uh, checkbox meal options dot item index equals a zero then our price equals 25 else and so on you could have also done something like that okay so great i know the number of meals i know the price and i'm going to make a total our total and that will be a real because we're dealing with real numbers here and our total will be whichever meal price you are selecting multiplied by how many meals you are taking, I assume. That makes sense to me. So there we worked out the, the actual meal price. Okay. So let's just double check what this vegetarian thing says. Okay. Let's check the checkbox for vegetarian. Write code to calculate the amount to be paid based on the selected information. We've got that decrease the amount by 10% if the vegetarian option has been selected. So the vegetarians get some sort of discount. So obviously they are discriminating against meat eaters. How dare they describe I love eating burgers and stuff like that. So let's have a look. We're going to, we're going to, if 
Now, how do I know the checkbox? Let's have a look at the checkbox. That checkbox is called CHB Vegetarian. So CHB Vegetarian. Now, the property of it is called checked. If that's a true, that means it's ticked. So if it equals true, then the total will equal, they get a 10% discount. Decrease the amount by 10%. So to decrease it by 10%, that just means that we are paying 90% of the value. So you can do it in multiple ways. You can say it equals to the total minus R total times about 10%. You could do something like that. So we work out 10% of R total and minus it from it. Or you can look, you can just say, well, we, if we we're making 10% off, we just pay 90% of the value. So 90% of the total. And if it is not checked, then we just leave it alone. So that's why I'm not going to have an else statement. Okay, great. Now we need to display it to two decimal places in the box over here. There's the edit cost. So let's go edit cost.text. And we are going to put that R total into it. But the R total is a real. And we want to display it as a currency to two decimal places. So I'm going to use, uh, it's a real, I must convert it from a real to, from what it is, a real to a string. So it's from float to string, but if I want to add those formatting options, I'm going to use float to string F. So that takes in our real value. Then we're going to put FF now. We normally use fixed, but we can use currency in this case. And then I want to put an 8 for how many before or before the decimal and after the decimal. That's important because you want two decimal places after. So that's why I put a 2 there. So it's two decimal places after the, or two places after decimal place for total. So let's run it and see if it works. I know you're shouting at me saying, but you've got the blue text. I know. Let's just see if it works. So what do they give? Do they give an example? Uh, they give an example. So toasted sandwich for vegetarian. So let's have a try it. So let's try the toasted sandwich. So we want four and we want vegetarian. And it's 90. There we go. So we get the same value they do, but we need it in blue text. Now, I'll be honest, I haven't seen that before. I would assume that we need to change it to blue text before we put anything into the edit control. So I'm going to go edit cost. Let's just double check what it says. It says in blue text. That's normally to do with a font. So I'm going to say dot font. Okay. Dot color. Ooh, there's a color. And it's a C, the colors are normally CL something. So I'm going to make it CL blue. So your colors are normally CL blue. So we change the font to blue and then we put in the answer. I think that's the right way to do it. I've never seen that type of question in the exam paper before, but let's see. So we're going to go to toasted sandwich. Mm, I could do with toasted sandwich now. And we want to make a vegetarian. So that's probably a spinach and feta toasted sandwich. And it's blue text. Fantastic. Okay, we will do the other two questions in a different video. So just go and look at part two of question one to get the other two questions for this paper, for the exemplar question one, section A. If you want to find the other videos for this exemplar paper, go to our YouTube channel. It'll probably be in a playlist over there. Have a look out for it and follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter so you can be up to date whenever we post new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.